In this example, we've been asked to solve the differential equation xy dash minus y equals x cubed e to the x. The first thing I notice that the highest derivative in this equation is a first derivative, so it's a first order differential equation. I see the first derivative and the y function, the dependent variables, are all raised to the power of 1, so this is a linear first order differential equation. I remember the two methods I have for solving first order differential equations separation of variables or the integrating factor with first order linear equations and I note that I've got three terms here I can rewrite y as dy dx but because of the three terms I'm not going to be able to separate all the y's with the dy and the x's with the dx so this is a first order linear differential equation which I need to solve with an integrating factor so we try and remember the method that we have for first order linear DEs with an integrating factor and the first thing to do is to put it into the standard form so I'm going to rewrite the y dash as dy dx and I'm going to divide the whole equation by this x term here to get it into the standard form so we'll have a 1 on x multiplied by the y here dividing the right hand side by x will give x squared e to the x this is now in the standard form dy dx minus a function of x times y equaling a function of x. So the next thing to do is to work out the integrating factor. We give that the symbol rho of x and that is equal to e to the power of the integral of whatever the function is in front of the y and including the negative as well. So I'm taking the integral of negative 1 on x dx that's the integrating factor so I can integrate that take the negative outside the integral of 1 on x with respect to x is log x now I can simplify an exponential raised to the power of the log but I've got to have a 1 in front of that log there so let's take the negative 1 here inside the log as a power to give e to the power of log of x to the minus 1. I can now cancel the exponential raised to the log to base e. They cancel and I'm just left with what's inside the log which is x to the minus 1 or 1 on x. So I see my integrating factor is 1 on x. The next step in the method is to multiply the differential equation by the integrating factor 1 on x. So here we have it here, 1 on x times dy dx minus 1 on x squared times y will equal x times e to the x. So multiplying by 1 on x is the same as dividing by x. Multiplying by 1 on x, dividing by x, the x squared cancels to just an x here. Now if I've done this properly and I've found the integrating factor properly, this should be, on the left-hand side, an exact derivative. That is the derivative with respect to x of the integrating factor, 1 on x, multiplied by y. And that is still just equal to x e to the x. At this stage, it's a good idea to check that this exact derivative is actually correct. So you're really just checking the fact uh, that you've got the right integrating factor and everything you've done up until there is correct. So the exact derivative is like the product rule in reverse. So we can tr test that by doing the product rule on this derivative here. I think of this as the function u, this is v, so the product rule is u dv dx, so it's the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second. Then it would normally be plus, well it is, plus the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first. So there's the second function. Over the side here, I might just do a little bit of working. If my function is 1 on x, so if in this case we might call this uh, function g, if g is 1 on x, then the derivative of that, I can think of that as x to the minus 1, the derivative of that would be minus x to the minus 2, which is minus 1 on x squared. And so in my product rule up here, 
Again, this second term is the second function y multiplied by the derivative of 1 on x, which we just saw was minus 1 on x squared. So there's the minus 1 on x squared. So it looks like we've got this correct. Our integrating factor has given us the correct exact derivative on the left-hand side. We now see that we've just got a single function of y in here. To get the y by itself, we integrate both sides now and rearrange for y. So integrating out the exact derivative with respect to x just leaves us with 1 on x, y. And over this side, we need to integrate x e to the x dx. When I do this integral, I'll have a function of x. Don't forget the arbitrary constant. I'll just multiply up by x, and I'll have the solution to the differential equation y by itself. I'm looking at this integral over at this side. I see it's a product of two functions of x, so it will uh, mean that I'm going to use the integration by parts. With the integration by parts, always let u equal the function that simplifies when you differentiate. So in this case, will be x. So over to the side, I will remember the integration by parts. I'm letting u equal x. The other function, dv, is equal to e to the x. And we always include, with the dv, the differential dv, always include the other differential dx. I know I need du and v, so I'm differentiating the first function here to work out that du dx is equal to 1, or du is equal to dx. Think of putting an integral sign in front of each side of the equation here with dv. The integral dv is just v. The integral of e, x, e to the x with respect to x is e to the x. Remembering the integration by parts, this is just for the right-hand side of the differential equation. So I can rewrite the left-hand side, y, uh, 1 on x, y, is equal to now the integral of x e to the x is uv minus the integral of v du. Remembering the integration by parts, the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. So substituting everything we have into the integration by parts rule and putting that onto the right-hand side of our differential equation gives us u times v, which is x e to the x, minus the integral of v du, so it's the integral of e to the x dx. We check that our integration by parts has transformed a difficult integral, this integral of a product, into a standard integral, which we have here, e to the x. We do that last integral. So our left-hand side doesn't change. x e to the x. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. We've done a bunch of integrals. We add up all the arbitrary constants and finish with uh, a one single arbitrary constant, c, here. We can simplify this a little bit. Take e to the x outside of x minus 1. It's always a good idea to simplify whenever you can. Plus c there. The solution to the differential equation is this function y. So we will multiply now by this x on the left-hand side to get our general solution for the differential equation. y is equal to e to the x, x, x minus 1. And don't forget the arbitrary constant is being multiplied by x as well. So multiplying up by this x, both of the terms here get multiplied by x. I put it in here, write the exponential first, then x. It doesn't matter which way you write it, it just looks a little bit neater. And don't forget the arbitrary constant being multiplied by x. So the general solution to the differential equation that we were given first order linear differential equation requires the integrating factor. Our solution is given here. We don't have any boundary conditions or any initial conditions in this case. If we did have some conditions, we would now be able to substitute them into the solution to solve for the arbitrary constant to get an exact solution. At this stage, this is good enough. General solution to the first order linear differential equation.